Thanks, everyone. Um, we are up for our last talk today uh, for from our own Michael Kane, and he's going to be talking about processing clinical trial analysis data with the forceps package. Hello, I'm back. Uh, so this talk is going to be pretty short. Um, and if we don't have time for questions, I am going to be at the virtual happy hour. Uh, and you, you can ask me questions then. Um, so this is about uh, actually um, extracting, uh, creating a, uh, a data set that is analyzable um, from kind of standard uh, FDA sub, uh, submission data. Um, so just as a little bit of background, uh, basically the clinical trial study data being submit, submitted to the FDA has to conform to uh, the standards that were put out by this uh, consortium called uh, CDIS, which is the Clinical Data Inter Interchange Standards Consortium. And the goal is to be is to enable information uh, system and interoperability to improve medical research and related areas of healthcare. So basically, this means that you, if you can standardize the format of the data a, um, a little bit better, then it's going to be easier to analyze. It's easier to validate uh, analysis results, and then it's potentially easier to be used in uh, uh, for for other trials or to inform other trials and develop new hypotheses and eventually new therapies. So one of the things that gets submitted with uh, with an FDA submission is what's called the analytical data model, uh, data model or atom formatted data. This is the individual level patient data. Um, these are the uh, these data are they have to be validated. So essentially, you know, if you have something like a like a clinical trial in cancer, for example, you just you define an endpoint, which is to say uh, this is what it means for the therapy to be successful or not successful. You need two different analysts uh, or two different programmers writing code uh, to actually extract those uh, those variables. And those variables, along with the all the other uh, data that you have on the individuals, goes into the uh, the atom formatted data. Um, these are used directly in the statistical analy analyses to show a therapy's uh, efficacy. So that means that the atom data sets are put in, and then along with that, there are scripts. They're usually SAS still that go in to show that yes, this uh, uh, th this therapy is actually effective. Um, so why might we care about atom da formatted data? Uh, these are the data that are uh, uh, that are provided for trial, and we might actually be, you know creating one of these reports. Uh, the other thing is right now there's, I don't know if many people know this, but there is a huge movement uh, to, to make clinical trial data available. A lot of times it's the uh, control control arm or standard of care arm. Um, but this is this has done a lot to allow us to basically understand the prognostic uh, progression of disease. Two of the big ones right now that I recommend using if you're doing this is Project Data Sphere uh, for for oncology for if you're studying cancer, and then Import for kind of for for other types of diseases. Um, these data f facilitate a lot of biomedical research. So, like I said, I do kind of uh, prognostic characterization of, of patients, usually in control data. Um, and then there's also this, this, this idea of subtype identification and analysis. The idea that some patients coming in are, you know, because of the characteristics that we have about them are more or like less likely to respond to a, uh, to a drug. So what's the challenge uh, and why am I giving this talk? Uh, so the big issue that we have is the, the data format is essentially it's SAS centric. So um, one of the things that SAS is not so great at is kind of mixing these different types of variables. And it really comes from two different reasons. First, you, you don't get pro proper factor encoding the way we do in, in R and SAS. And then the other thing is there's no notion of a nested uh, uh, data frame uh, in, in SAS. So if you have something like a, a longitudinal data set and uh, something that's not longitudinal, then you're really thinking about repeating values if you wanna, if you wanna combine those. And that's not how we need to do these things in R. Um, uh, on top of that, uh, these da data sets are not tidy. Uh, they're not, um, that is, you have uh, columns in the data set that correspond to multiple variables. So one of the things you need to do if you're going to do an analysis is actually tease those out and think about how you how you're going to spread them. So forceps is so the forceps package, which I'm talking about right now, um, is kind of a minimal set of functions that facilitate the the creation of data sets where you have one row per patient. Uh, if you have longitudinal data, then that basically gets nested for that patient, and then you have the option to unnest it yourself or extract uh, features uh, from it 
um, and, and do an analysis however you want. There are basically four main verbs. There's a data description, uh, which I'll show in a sec, contradictions, which basically look for contradictions in the variable assignments and types across the different data sets that we're getting. Um, there's consolidate, which puts them all together, and then cohort, which basically lets us look at these data sets at different levels, either the individual level or in, you know, uh, maybe at the, uh, the site level or you know, by some uh, demographic feature like, like sex. Um, so I'm gonna include, uh, there's a toy SAS 7 uh, BDAT files uh, that's kind of in line with what you expect to see uh, uh, in, in an Atom file in the package uh, that, that's, our, that's available. So if you wanna know what the data look like, um, usually it's just a set of these SAS 7 BDAT files. So we can use Haven to look at them uh, if we wanna see what they, um, the actual contents for this in, in this example. Uh, these are basically three different data sets, AE, which is gonna be a longitudinal data set, biomarker, which is not, and then demography, which is also not. Um, so here's a, uh, an example of AE. On top of being longitudinal, you can see that this actually has multiple variables in, in the same column. So AE is adverse event, and you have these different types of adverse events along with the grades, along with the times that they were, uh, th that they were being seen. Um, the, let's see, this is the biomarker data. Uh, it's, you know, this is not, it, it doesn't actually have genetic indicators, uh, but it does have uh, things like ECOG, uh, uh, smoking and so on. And again, in this case, it's one row per, uh, one row per patient. Whereas before uh, we were at uh, multiple, uh, a, a patient can be seen multiple times because it is a longitudinal data set. And then the last data set, the demography is about the same as, uh, as, as the second data set in terms of, of its format. Um, so what would we like to, the data to look like? So again, if we have longitudinal data, or so, yeah, uh, I want I would like to have one row per individual. If I have longitudinal data set, I'd like to nest it in um, in uh, in a data uh, in a data frame in one of the columns. So in this case, for patient one zero zero three, their longitudinal adverse event information will be contained in a, a table that I can then um, that I can then extract features from, or again, I can I, I can unnest and do kind of a more traditional uh, longitudinal uh, uh, analysis. Any of the other variables, especially the ones that were repeated in the longitudinal data set, only get shown once. I only need that once per, per patient. Uh, so the first thing that I usually do when, uh, when cleaning with these data sets is I'll do a data description. So the data uh, inside this, so the SAS B7, uh, Yes, the SAS data files usually have a little bit of extra uh, meta information that's included. So you can pull that out um, and, and look at that next to the actual variable name. After that, you wanna uh, usually find conflicts. So in this case, we have three different data sets that we've read in. Uh, you do run into cases where uh, you'll have um, for a given uh, patient, you'll have the same variable name repeated, but the values will actually be different. And that may be because that they're actually capturing uh, uh, different, um, different uh, th th they're actually different measurements or because that there's a, there's a coding error and both do occur in these, uh, in, in these data sets, even though they are being submitted for clinical trials. So you can call contradictions on this and what this says is it'll, it'll find all the contradictions. So all the places where you have a, a variable that has different values in the different data sets. So for example, in this one, I have one that's OS days for OS overall survival days. Uh, you can see that in AE, this is an NA for user 1003, but it's 233 for both the biomarker and uh, demography data set. And then we have a similar format for, um, or uh, yeah, a similar issue with uh, OS sensor and then there's also uh, an issue with age in this in this particular data set. So what I might want to do then is go to my AE data set and pivot wider, uh, and, yeah, and basically pivot the adverse events so that I have the adverse event and the grade, and then think about how to join that. Um, the way I would do that is first go to the adverse event data set and for the variables that are repeated. So uh, for example, sex is repeated for the patient because the the patient's sex does not change over the course of the trial. Um, I can just go through and uh, do a summarize and pull the first one variable uh, per patient. After that, I can go through and get the actual, um, the adverse events and the grades. I'm gonna do that with a pivot wider that's nested inside of a 4-H and I'm doing that because 
um, there's you do tend to run into uh, kind of consistency issues with the data. So I can put that into a 4-H. I can do a try catch just to make sure that there aren't any errors. If there are, I can be uh, a little more careful about how I return that. After that, I'm going to go through and for each one of those adverse event variables I have, if it's an NA, that indicates that it didn't have the adverse event. And I'm just going to set that to a grade zero, that, that it didn't happen. After that, I'm going to do a full join. And then I have my new uh, adverse event data set. After that, I can consolidate the data sets. So again, DS is this is the three are the three data sets that were put together. I'm consolidating on the patient ID, and I have a data set that um, that is uh, that, that's now analysis ready. Along with that, there's a cohort uh, there's a cohort verb. I'm not going to show that because of time, but the idea is again. Uh, if you have repeated variables, that you can collapse those on the cohort variable of interest. I was showing cohorting on by patient ID, but you can also do this on on things like the site ID or 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 demography data. Um, as far as it, can it be used now? This is actually the second uh, iteration of a package called Normalizer that I've been work uh, that 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 is stable. Uh, it, it, the package, um, the forceps package will be up and available in the next few weeks. Since this is the, the second iteration, I have a pretty good idea that the, the interface is not going to be able to change or is not going to change very much. Um, the, it will be available on my GitHub page slash forceps. Uh, and that's it. Thanks very much. Thanks, Michael. Let's see. That was I do believe that we're pretty much out of time from there. Yep. So um, like you had pointed out earlier, you're going to be in the, uh, the happy hour session. And uh, anybody who wants to ask any questions, please feel free to hit Mike up in there. Yep. Thanks very much.